some years ago I could visit I got an opportunity to visit a center for the handicapped children you know brothers and sisters most of those most of those children they are very active they are very talented people but in one way or other way they are all handicapped they cannot walk or they cannot they have some disability but they are quite strong in their mind they are able to do so many things some of them are very good in studies some of them are in good in painting some of them are good in tailoring some of them are good in music in different way but they all need a help to grow in their life what i'm telling is that i met a sister there a religious nun she was working there for 21 years i met her maybe 10 years ago then i asked sister how many years because it is very difficult to work with these people because they need uh, their special assist they need special assistance in in their day to day life and they are also they are mentally uh, fit people they are also like other children in, in mentally so they also do you know that all all kinds of naughtiness they have they are naughty people but you need a lot of patience you need a lot of love you need a lot of hope to work among these people i asked this sister, sister how many she told me that father i'm working in this in this center for last 21 years sometimes she told me that i i asked her how is it going on she told me it is wonderful but sometimes i feel i'm tired sometimes i feel that it is the children are not obeying me sometimes i also feel that it is waste of time money and energy these are all thoughts i have but ultimately i could say all these 21 years i was helping jesus who was who was broken who was poor and who was not attended by many people what he meant, what she meant was these are the people who are in very often who are rejected from their own families these are the people who really need our special care and assistance so i am with them to help them to bring good out of them my brothers and sisters that is why i told in today's world there is market for beautiful things there is market for colorful things there is market for wonderful things there is no there is there is no importance for people who are poor who are marginalized who are sick who are handicapped who are not in the main line so christian vocation is to take care of all of them so in today's today's gospel is an invitation for all of us to think about our social commitment our social commitment we are all living by faith we live by faith not by our own eyesight as that we read in 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 letter to romans that we all live not by uh, not by eyesight but we live by faith my brothers and sisters this is the faith which always helps us this is the hope which always guides us give light and hope to people who are away from the mainstream so that's why i told this gospel passage is also inviting us to think about our social commitment what commitment what commitment i have towards uh, this world make your life more meaningful deep and precious by sharing your life and qualities with those people who ne- really need our help so spirituality also has a social dimension it has got multi, uh, spirituality has always multiple dimensions spirituality involves praising worshiping adoring spirituality involves loving other people spirituality involves or spirituality includes um, forgiving people and today's gospel especially inviting us to think about our spirituality by including social commitment doing something beautiful for god 
doing something beautiful for people around. That is what Mother Teresa did. That's what Mother Teresa did. That's what Francis, St. Francis of Assisi did. That's what many people who live in this world, they do. They all love Christ. They all love Christ. You say that if you love someone, you don't simply say that I love you, I love you. Sometimes you say that you love him or her. But it has got also some practical dimensions. Am I right? If you love some person, some people, you spend some time with them. Sometimes you exchange gifts. Sometimes you take care of that person. And very often you are, that person is in your thought, in your mind. So brothers and sisters, people who are worshipping the Lord, people who are adoring Christ, people who are always with Jesus Christ, people who are attending this service, what is in their mind? My brothers and sisters, always keep in our mind, in our thought, the people who are rejected, people who are not loved by anyone, people who are far away from the mainstream. These people, there is, they are people who represent Christ before us. They are the people, through them, Jesus Christ is approaching you and me. So brothers and sisters, when we are looking at them, when we are spending time with them, when we are trying to give some time for them, when we are sharing our money or possessions with them, when we are helping them in their growth, we can say proudly that we are in the right path. We love Jesus Christ. Those people who love Jesus Christ, they also love people who are loved by Christ or people who have the same color and the same smell of Christ. Pope Francis reminds all of us, especially the pastors, they must have the smell of sheep. It's not only for the pastors, every, each and every Christian, they all should have the smell of Christ. My brothers and sisters, what is the smell of Christ? The smell of Christ, the taste of Christ, the face of Christ is very close to those people who are poor, people who are marginalized, people who are sick, people who are away from the mainstream. My dear brothers and sisters, let us help one another in their growth. It really helps people to make their life more meaningful. What gives, what gives meaning for your life and my life? A person who lived 40 years or 50 years or 60 years. And we, we proudly say that 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. I believed in Christ. I spent everything for Jesus Christ. I spent all my time, energy, uh, sometimes money, everything for Christ. What do you have earned? What do you have earned? In my case, a person who is relating with these thoughts, Christ or people, or, or, or the people of God, or a person who committed life for Christ, what can, how can I evaluate my life? It is simply in terms of love. How much I have loved the people around. Brothers and sisters, this is what we all have. A person who have committed for Christ, finally he has to measure his life in terms of his love towards the people of God. How much I'm, or how far I'm successful in my, how far I'm successful in my love towards people around me. How deep I am in my love towards people around me. Brothers and sisters, this gives us a meaning for spiritual life. This gives more color for our spiritual life. So I always would like to tell you that our spiritual life has, or our spiritual life is always associated with the people around us. I just read something about the cloistered life. Cloist, this recently. Cloistered life, you know that these are the people uh, in different monasteries and in convents. They keep themselves away from the world. And they spend a lot of time in prayer. They are not in touch with uh, 
anybody outside hardly they have touch with the people around very uh, sometimes people come and they would visit them and they ask for the prayer intentions they speak them some very very little contact or very limited contact that they have with the people but my brothers and sisters sometimes we think why people should live in this way why people are keeping themselves away from this world up to vatican second these kinds of life was very much fostered or people were uh, so many people were entering in this life even in the cloistered life people are called to share their life for the people around to pray for them to do penance for them and even in the cloistered life social apostolate in a different way to be in touch with god to pray for the people of god to strengthen people who are in this world my brothers and sisters if that is the life with so close state life what about us people who are really living in this world there was a time there was a time uh, there was a spirituality keep everything away, keep ourselves away from the world keep ourselves away from the world but you know brothers and sisters nowadays spirituality is very much understood in an, in an, from an another angle It's not that you are going away from this world you live and you show your life with your life you show people around what spirituality really what spirituality really is so my brothers and sisters let us let us help people to go, grow in their daily life we shall not break the crushed reed nor put put out the smoldering wick there may be people who are who are little who are weak who are who are behind us let us join together let us bring people together help them to walk forward that is our mission that is what we that is what the lord expects from each one of us you know that the mothers you take care of your children very well you know that if a child if you have three or four children if a child who is sick maybe if your child if your elder child or second child is having fever and he or she is sick she needs or he needs your help what do you do the mother leave all other children the mother is spending most of her time with the second child if vocation means it's true that we have vocation to married life priesthood or religious life but more than that in our day to day life vocation can be easily associated with what we are doing we are called by jesus christ for a mission each and every one in this world all children of god they all have a particular mission to be completed in our day to day life some of you may be working in the field some of you may be in the office some of you are in the medical team some of you are doctors nurses some of us are priest or some of us are actively involved in the ministry of evangelization some people may be working in government offices so brothers and sisters wherever we are we all do a mission for christ a work for the lord or in other words we can say we are moving with jesus christ so that is our vocation a vocation or a special mission to be completed in my day to day life what am i you may be a father you may be a mother in addition to that you may be a teacher you may be a nurse you may be a doctor uh, you may be a, a mechanic wherever you go my brothers and sisters we all work hard for our daily life and we all have a mission to be completed my brothers and sisters in today's gospel jesus clearly tells us whatever we do wherever we go this is a message we have to get from jesus here is my servant whom i have chosen my beloved the favorite of my soul 
I will endow him with my spirit and he will proclaim the true faith to the nations. Wherever we go, we have a mission to proclaim true faith to the nations. In our day-to-day -day life, we meet so many people. Remember, my brothers and sisters, you and me, we have a mission to proclaim Jesus Christ in our daily life. You and me, we represent Christ in our field. You and me, we are called to strengthen our brother, brothers and sisters who are broken, who are far away from the mainstream, who are marginalized, and who do not have a beautiful life. And we also continue read, He will not break the crushed reed, nor put out smoldering wick. So in today's world, it is quite common that there is priority for those people who are talented, people who are smart, people who are well-educated, people who have all the facilities, people who are able to do wonderful things for people. Brothers and sisters, these are the people who are in the mainstream. There are people who are far away from this mainstream. People who are marginalized. People who are in the side, side roads. People who are in the pocket roads. They also need our care, our attention and our special help. What I mean is, my brothers and sisters, our vocation is also a vocation to Christianity, is also a vocation to serve the people who are away from the mainstream. I remember that 